guys, welcome back to Chasing the Woodsman. I am Ryan. Today we're gonna to be tackling my post and beam building. I call it my pole barn, because that's really what it is. It all started back in 2021. We had a big windstorm come through the area, as I've shared in a few of my videos, and I was able to salvage the logs on my property, my neighbor's property and in the surrounding area. With that, I produced a building. Now it's my, my task, my job to actually frame this thing in. Now, because it's not a true square timber frame style building or just a studded building, it's kind of difficult. So this is a custom build with custom building and custom problems with custom solutions. Because of that, I have to kind of just roll with it as I go from wall to wall, angle to angle and corner to corner. And so because nothing is straight, because logs are not straight, I have to come up with ways to hide nooks and crannies and make everything work. So I'll show you what I mean. Because obviously a log is round, I have this problem that I have these gaps in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this electric planer and take and smooth out a six inch section in here all the way around. That way my two by six sits flat up against the log. This poses extra work, whereas if you had a true timber frame building or a, a stick built building, you wouldn't be having to do this stuff. However, that's where I'm at. So I have true two by sixes, which I'm actually gonna cut down to the standard width of uh, five and five eighths to allow myself some room for sheathing to go across this wall. Every building needs uh, some plywood on the outside. Everyone knows that. And then from there, I'll frame it in with some cedar and then use hemlock, hopefully, for my siding, my lap siding going all the way up. So that's kind of a basic understanding of what I have going on. So what you're gonna see me doing is taking, starting off the electric planer and cutting out or smoothing out six inches. Then I need to take out my two by sixes, plain, or trim them down to the width that I need, frame this in, stand it up, and then move on to the next wall. So with that, let's get started. be wondering why I'm doing this now how come I didn't straighten these out when they were on the ground before going up it wasn't my intention really to to frame this building in I was just gonna leave it as a post and beam pole barn uh, just something to cover up the tractor and hold implements and equipment and stuff but the way things have just worked out I decided well I'm gonna make it into my wood shop for right now and so that's why I'm now having to do this getting myself a good shoulder workout and get this thing planed out while it's already up. I didn't have my wood mill before this. My tractor had been broken down, a different tractor than the one I own now. And so really I was just all by hand in constructing this barn. And it was all by hand. I had a big jig to do the two ends to make sure everything was plumb and squared out. It was kind of a, quite a project, but with all that being said, that's why I'm doing this now, is, is kind of all afterthought.
is a perfect example on logs. They're just, they're not perfect. So I had a center line going up the middle and that's where I started with the, this electric plane. That way I can build in making sure I am, I am where I need to be flush for when that two by six goes against the log. I'm all ready to my outside line, but I'm nowhere near this inside line. It's just the nature of the log. I'll take a little bit more meat away from this, but I don't want to get too far out because then you'll see that from the outside. And, and so this shows that I'll have a flat surface, but I'm not going to be able to get that full six inches. here a little there before you know it it's it's flat a little trim on the top and then I'll move on to getting these boards into the width that I need them and then we'll get this thing nailed up and stood up Very tiring work. Make the flappy dad bod go away though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so you just saw that I got all three logs planed flat in preparation for my wall to be stood up. Now that I have that part done, I've calculated it out. I need 24 2x6s milled down 
to, uh, I have them at the true two inches thick, but I need them five and a half inches wide to allow for my 15, 30 seconds plywood. And, uh, and then my cedar trim and hemlock siding to go on the side, hemlock, red fir, whatever I can get my hands on. I'm hoping for hemlock, but we'll see what I can get. Um, with that being said, I need to take and slap on 24 boards on here and just trim them down. I have the stack behind me. I have some boards down at the work site. I'm going to try and collect up all that I have and then get those things uh, trimmed down. I had a lot more boards, but in the newness of me learning how to cut with a sawmill, they warped, they just kind of turned to crap. A lot of that is because the logs I have are skinny. So it's just a lot of that heartwood, which for you guys that are new to this, if you're cutting a little log, some of that heartwood tends to make kind of crap lumber. So just keep that in mind. If you can get your hands on some bigger stuff, you're just gonna be light years ahead. Otherwise, let's get these things trimmed down so we can get this thing built and put together. So really make framing up real simple, knowing that uh, all of them are exactly the same going across. So I've laid these three boards out because they're, they must have come off of the mill when I was having a dull blade or problems with the mill. Um, they're kind of wavy and they're definitely over my two inches. For a stud, maybe it doesn't matter, but I would like it to be uniform. That way I'm not running into problems with insulation, running into problems with wiring, all that different stuff. I have a nice straight square board. So I'm gonna just take and trim off that uh, whatever amount that it needs to be trimmed down to for the true two inches. That way all of my lumber is uniform. There's weighing on some of my pieces, but overall I like them to be the same, like, it, like you'd buy in a store. So that's what we're doing here.
much better. Some of this wane and this useless kind of piece down here, that's gonna be cut off. I only need 101 inches or about 100 inches and that's gonna be about right here. So I'll be able to cut some of that garbage wood off of there. Exactly two inches. I'm sure this is going to be the first comment I receive is how come I'm not using a treated two by six for my sill plate. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I, uh, I'm going to kind of go overkill with my foam. I'm going to do a sill sealer, that tape that you can purchase on the outside of this. And I may even coat the underside. Um, I haven't been in town to be able to even pick up, uh, uh, treated two by six, nor do I really want to. I'm doing this hundred percent for my mill. So it's doable. They've been doing it for a hundred years. Um, I don't foresee any major problems, especially if I kind of go the, the extra step of making sure I have that foam pad along with that uh, double-sided tape out here, my flashing underneath my trim and everything like that. So I can't say I'm too worried about rot on this sill plate at all because I will be making sure to go the full steps as far as sealing that, making it airtight, all that kind of stuff, watertight. So yes, I know I'm not doing uh, a treated. Yes, you're, you're supposed to but I'm just not, so that's that. And just in case you're wondering, this wire is not live. I don't even have it hooked up yet. I haven't had the electrician come out to wire in my box. guys so here we are the next day you might notice a little bit with my channel that I don't always complete one task within one day I have a lot of irons in the fire between my normal job and other engagements I'm involved in even in the sense that of a weekend I don't have that standard Saturday Sunday for some folks Friday Saturday Sunday type weekend mine I have a day here and a day there an hour here and an hour there so I'm just trying to squeeze in my home projects when I can with that, I'm out here in a new afternoon. I wanna try and get this thing stood up so I can move on to the other side. So what you're gonna see take place is I need to take and trim out this log a little bit more to make sure my up and down measurements are the same going all the way across because we all know the logs are not straight. After that, I'm gonna take and use this tongue oil. Tongue oil is a fantastic way to seal your wood if you're not gonna use pressure treated lumber. So with that, I'll get that tongue oil on the bottom of the seal plate, sill plate. After that, I'm going to take and liquid nail my sill gasket to the concrete because it's good to have this foam gasket between concrete and wood. Concrete will absorb moisture, so that's why people will do uh, pressure treated lumber even then they're still going to do this sill gasket to stop that transfer of moisture. After I get this stood up, leveled out and screwed into place, bolted down with my J-hooks, I'm going to take and get uh, the edges caulked and then I'm putting my flashing tape on the outside to help stop some of that, that moisture transfer and then do my sheathing on the outside. So those are the steps that you're gonna see. And then I'm gonna move on to the other side, get that thing done, and then move on to put in my, for pouring my foundations ar around the rest of the, the bay here, getting that framed up. So very soon I can maybe have a barn or a wood shop. So with that, let's get started.
Ideally a brush would be best, but this is where I, what I got and where I'm at. Used a lot of different oils in my in my time. I like tongue oil the best for many different reasons. I'll I won't really get into those now. But if you're looking for a good oil, I suggest tongue. I've had great success for it on many of my projects. It's a good natural oil that you don't have to really worry about any oil. You're gonna have upkeep on it when you're talking about furniture or cabinets or shelves or something. Every year I do a, a fresh coat and I actually make my own wood wax. It's a, with the sunflower oil and, and a uh, beeswax combination. Uh, but the tongue oil really does work well for waterproofing stuff. And that's kind of the whole purpose for what I'm doing here. To keep that moisture, to help get the moisture out. Doesn't keep it waterproof, but keeps moisture out. I'm sure there's a lot of different opinions out there on, on whether you need to do this step beneath the sill gasket or not. I'm of the opinion of why not? What's it hurt to put a little uh, liquid nail underneath there to kind of help with moisture and keep that gasket down in place while you're trying to raise the wall? And in my case, one man crew with the tractor, this will really help me out. That way I'm not worrying about if my sill gasket's gonna be in place as I'm trying to raise this and squeeze it between my posts.
you're wondering, I drew a line along here from my outside edge.
Well, no fiasco, so that's good. All right guys, thanks for joining me in this video where you saw that custom builds call for custom solutions. It kind of delays things and makes some things difficult, but it's worth it in the end because you have something that you built with your two hands. From the hand-hewn logs I collected from a storm to the lumber that I was able to cut on my mill to the framing it up where I'll then sheath it with plywood, side it, insulate it, all the nine yards to actually have a building. So. Thanks for tuning in. Give me a like and a subscribe. Obviously, there'll be many more videos that cover this build from every step. Next, I'll move on to this other side so I can have this bay complete. I need to take and put joists across the top so I can have a floor. I'll get this thing sheeted and, and sided and everything. So thanks for tuning in. Be blessed in all you do. We'll see you guys next time.